Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Color Valley Cooks. Today is our Thanksgiving meal. Isn't this a cute apron? Got it at Aldi as a set with this for like $7.99. Y'all go shopping at Aldi today. Um, I am bringing water to a boil to make macaroni noodles. And I'm also bringing water to a boil to make my deviled eggs and to boil a couple of eggs to go in my dressing. So I'm going to grab my eggs and go ahead and place them in the boiling water. There's a crow outside. And let me show you how to do this. You can walk on over here, Chris. So when you make eggs, the best way to do it is to bring your water to a boil first. Put them down in the water with a slotted spoon. These are large eggs. I like to boil them 12 minutes to be on the safe side. And I'm going to boil quite a few because I'm going to make deviled eggs and I need a couple for my dressing. One more. Okay. So we're going to put the lid back on those. You don't have to boil them with a the lid. That just keeps them hotter. I'm going to turn them down a little bit. And we're going to uh, bring this. Once they start to boil, I'll set the timer. How's that? Now, this is my for my macaroni and cheese. So, we're going to go ahead and start boiling some macaroni. Hey, you've never done macaroni and cheese before. Um, I've done it um, with that other kind of cheese, but I yeah. have done homemade macaroni and cheese before. So, today you get to see it. I think I'll do, um, how many cups you think? Three. Three. One, two. Three cups of macaroni. Lord. I always have to drop some. Stir it up and just add a little bit of salt to it. If you add oil or butter, don't do that to your macaroni or your cheese and stuff won't cling to it as well. So let's put in a little bit of salt. I'm trying to think of what I'm doing. Salt. Whoa. About a teaspoon. I'm going to cover it back up so it'll come to a boil quick. Okay? Now it gets that. We'll take our eggs back over here and get started on the dressing. Now we're going to that's going to boil about eight minutes. Uh, the the um, eggs will boil about 12 minutes. The pasta will boil about eight minutes. And I'm watching my timer over there. Okay. So right now we're going to start our dressing. I am going to chop up part of an onion. One thing I'm not doing today is potato salad. I'll show y'all what we're going to do with our potatoes today. We're going to do sweet potatoes today. We're also going to be making um, sweet potatoes and we're going to make, what else are we going to make? A, a green bean casserole. Okay. Nobody likes it hardly but me, but my friend Ellen and her daughter's coming over, so maybe they'll eat some of it. I just bake those uh, sweet potatoes. Whoa! These are boiling. All right, I'm gonna take the lid off that, and the eggs have come to a boil, so I'm gonna take the lid off of them as well. Make sure they're both up on a high enough temperature to boil, and we'll keep cooking. Oh, and Chris found some chicken stock in the refrigerator. I didn't think I had any, so that's good. These onions are so big, they're a pain in the butt to chop. Because they're so big, I can't treat them like a regular onion and chop them the way I normally do. They're really, really big. Okay, that's good for dressing. I 
going in. Going in. We're going to do celery next. I'm going to start with three stalks. And I don't like my celery to be in big pieces, so I usually split it two or three times, and then I chop it. So it takes a minute to do, but it's just better that way. Gerald Clayton is watching. Hey, Gerald, I'm making some dressing. That's my brother-in-law. And yes, I do put celery in what I make that Lisa eats, and she just don't know it, Gerald, because I cut it so small. Don't show this to Lisa. Yeah. It's a secret. As long as you, if, as long as you cook it, cut it small, and you don't even really know it's in there, but you really got to cut it thin. That's my brother-in-law in Chickamauga, Georgia. Hey, let me see. Let me talk to him a second. Gerald, I have to watch because I'm cutting something. See my cute apron? They have them at Aldi, and I know you like to cook. Go get you an apron. They got different colors. I don't know if they have an Aldi, do they, Chris? Yeah. This time of year, you can also find them in, like, you know, Marshalls and Ross and places like that. Uh, Gerald, let us know if Lisa and Nana are shopping today. Me and Amy went out last night, and we got... We got in there. We just uh, the only place we got to go was Ulta because everything else is too crowded. We just happened to look up when we got to Ulta. It was they were just opening their doors. Amy Hidingsfelder says she secretly puts it in hers too. Amy, I do know not to mail your cookbooks until December, so don't worry. You have to be patient cutting up this much celery, little. Amy Murphy says she uses an electric chopper and then leaves the juice in with it. Oh. That works too. And then after I chop it, I also crisscross chop it too. It's Gerald's sweet son, our nephew, that got us these nice chef knives, and boy, have they been a blessing. They are expensive, but boy, they're a blessing. Hey, there goes our celery in the pot. Yummy, yum. One chicken bouillon. How much beef broth? I mean, how much chicken broth? Four and a half cups of chicken broth. So... in the refrigerator we're about to see and I gotta make sure it's still good we've been gone a few weeks so I had to make this before we left it's fine um it also had a seal on the top and I'm gonna go ahead and let the fat go in there and everything mm -hmm. so there's two um Two and a half. I'm going to um, take some of this and put it in the microwave to heat up my bouillon in. So let's get that started. That'll be hot and boiling and we'll put our bouillon in that. Now we're going to open a can of cream of chicken soup and throw it in here. And a lot of people freak out about that. But. Yeah, but let me just say this. Don't freak out about it uh, because it makes it so fluffy and delicious. And if you don't want to use cream of chicken soup, then go over there and make you some cream of chicken soup. But I'm not going to. All right, poultry seasoning. How much? I've got a half to three quarters of a teaspoon. 
that much is good for me. Um, two cups of milk. Let's see. Two raw eggs. Let's throw those in. Have you ever tried cream of celery? Um, no, but I'm sure it'd be good. Any cream of chicken soup would do. Cream of chicken, cream of celery, nothing. cream of mushroom, I'm sure it would work, but it would just add a mushroom flavor to it. Um, salt and pepper. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. Remember, your cornbread's already got salt in it, which you're going to put in here. Half a teaspoon of pepper. Let's see. Cream of chickens and we still got to put in uh, our loaf bread, our boiled eggs, our bouillon, our milk. And that's it. So, cornbread. This is just one recipe of cornbread. Always make your cornbread light. If you make it light, it just tastes better in the dressing. All right, my my uh, noodles are done. We need to get them off. Let me put all this in there, and then we'll go get the noodles. We're going to make mac and cheese out of these, so I'm going to drain these right quick. I thought you only used like three quarters of that cornbread. That's if I make two recipes. Oh, a double recipe. Yeah. I got you. All right, here this goes in. So we're going to leave our macaroni there for a minute, and we'll just mix it back up in the same pot in a minute, okay? But we need to let our eggs cook a couple more minutes, and then we'll add those to the dressing. All right, this is boiling. Yes, our broth is boiling. So we are going to put our chicken bouillon in here. Now this is a nor, one nor, or you could use four of the square kind. They're all saying how pretty you look. Thank you. They like your hair, your apron. And we're going to mix this bouillon up in our broth. I always heat up a little bit of broth to mix my bouillon in, okay? And that way it doesn't go in cold because you want it to be good and you know, mix in your dressing and not different pieces. You don't want somebody to get a bite of bouillon. Going in. And you're probably thinking, why do you put in bouillon when you've got fresh stock? Because I like it. That's why. I like it. I like it. Okay. Let's cut up some bread. Uh, you usually put about four or five loaves of bread in here. I know some people use crackers and stuff, but I just use what my mama did. That's bread. I actually have some hot dog buns that need to be cooked or e eaten, so you don't really cook a hot dog bun. So we're going to cut some buns up. I'm going to do three of them. And I always use a bread knife because it's easier. And we're just going to cut some bread up now. It helps make it light and fluffy. I'm going to add this last. Um, it'll help your dressing be more fluffy. And I really think that bread does a better job than crackers because if you take a piece of bread and you soak it in water, it looks a lot different than a cracker soaked in water. And you want your dressing to have a fluffy uh, look to it and that way when it gets to room temperature it doesn't get dense and hard I've had dressing twice this year already in different places while they had a pretty good flavor I have to say they're not even close to as good as mine uh, flavor wise and they were both dense cold so if you want to try to get a dressing that's fluffy um, and it's good to heat up later and good to eat cold if you're taking it somewhere. Then go buy my recipe. You'll really like it. I promise. I had somebody post yesterday. They made my recipe and it was the best they ever had. So y'all just try it for once. See if you like it. 
I try stuff all the time for y'all. I really do. All right, so I think that might be enough. We may not have to do three buns. Did you put milk in there? I'm about to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put two cups of milk in here. And I'm not making quite as much cornbread as I normally do. So I may not put the whole two cups of milk. Just according to how it looks once I mix it up. All right, the only thing left now is um, the bread and the boiled eggs. You want it to be runny like that. If it's runny like that, then when it cooks up, it'll be nice and fluffy, and it'll be good. So, I'm going to grab a couple of eggs. And we'll get them in there. Bring your water to a bowl first. Do you see how fast that is? Look, it just falls right off. And you can make some really pretty eggs that way. I'm going to let them cool just a minute before I chop them up because I don't want them to burn me. And I did put in my salt and pepper. I'm going to add another little bit of pepper just for fun. And I think that's it. We got our uh, cornbread in there, our cream of chicken soup, our loaf bread's about to go in. We got the two boiled eggs. We got the onion, the celery, the salt, the pepper, the poultry seasoning. Uh, the chicken broth, the bouillon, the milk, and the raw eggs. We've done good, y'all. We're getting it done today. We're doing it fast. Let me grab my spray. We're going to spray our pan. And this is getting done right on time because we got two minutes left on our bird for browning it. And right when that two minutes is up, we're going to be able to turn the oven down. And cook our dressing at the same time. Let's see if I can find my egg slicer. Didn't I buy an egg slicer? Yep, yep I did. I bought an egg slicer. I love egg slicers. They're wonderful. So much easier than chopping it up in your hand, especially when it's hot. And boiled eggs and dressing are just so good. Believe it or not, it makes a difference. Now, we got our eggs in there. I'm going to mix it up real quick, and then we're going to throw in our uh, bread. And we may or may not add milk. It's just according to how it is once the bread goes in. Decatur, Alabama. We love North Alabama. We love fishing in North Alabama. All right, so we're mixing in our bread. Just fold it in. Now, I didn't put the extra cup of milk in because I didn't use, I usually make a double cornbread recipe and use three quarter of the cornbread. Today, I used a single cornbread, so I knew it wouldn't take quite as much liquid. It's actually really perfect, but you see how that bread goes in there? Just look at how it looks in there. It's going to make our dressing really fluffy and good. And it's not going to be all dense, okay? So that's the key to it, okay? That's why bread is better than crackers. All right, here we go. Talk about good timing. We got it going on today. That's our, see how that looks on the top? Kind of wet. That's how you want it to look. And if you have baked a chicken, you can put some chicken pieces down in there. But we don't have a chicken to put down in there. Now we are roasting a hen. Yeah. So that will be our chicken. All right. So now that our 425 is up, 
We're going to turn the oven off. I'm going to put it back on convection bake. And you can use regular bake. And leave it on 350 and hit start. Okay. Now I'm going to open this up. You can see our bird is brown. And I'm going to put the dressing in here. And I'm going to put it to the side because I'm actually going to make some mac and cheese a little bit. The good thing about having a convection oven is it does take that heat and distribute it around evenly when you've got several things in the oven, which is nice. Now, we are going to make gravy. And instead of mixing up gravy in a skillet and having to wash something different, I'm going to make it in this. We're going to make a gravy cream sauce and then add our cheese. Okay? Sharon Wilson got on here, and she is from Gainesville, Florida. Uh-huh. And she said, go Gators. Well, Can you believe that? that? She said, go Gators. What? <laughs> but she says she loves you and loves us, so. Thank you. You can say go. All guys. right, we're going to put a half a stick. Well, it's a little bit. It's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of butter in here. Now, this is for the gravy. This is a gravy. It's going to be a gravy sauce for our mac and cheese. We're going to turn on the oven. I mean, the stove top. And I'm going to slice this butter up in there so that it doesn't take it forever to melt. Is this like the gravy you made the other day? Or is this it? Um... Well, I don't make mac and cheese out of it. So, no. Okay. It's not. Oh, this is for the mac and cheese. Yeah. So, this is a bechamel. Yeah, this is a bechamel. <laughs> we learned that when we were in California, y'all. Um, I'm going to put this in here. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going to put the butter in here. Okay. We're going now, I like to put my salt and pepper in. So, we are making, um, now the cheese will have a good bit of salt in it, so you don't have to put in a whole lot of salt, just about a half a teaspoon. And then here's the pepper, a half a teaspoon. I got a roll tied in there. All right, you're going to melt your butter and a little bit of shortening down in your pot. We're about to make homemade macaroni and cheese. We're going to do it the old fashioned way, like Mama, Mama did when she did it. She didn't do it often, and I don't either. Now you're going to add some flour. This is a half a cup of flour. Self rising. Self rising. It do not have to be self rising, but that's what we use. So I. Hate to steer you otherwise. This is a gravy spatula. Whisk. Whisk. Thank you, Chris. It's taking care of me today, y'all. So you're just going to put your um, flour down in there and you're going to let it brown a minute. UCLA brewing and a trying bulldog. Now, I know that some of you put, look at me. I know that some of y'all put onion and different things in your mac and cheese. Well, I'm not. This is mac and cheese for the kids. Now, I can put a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper or paprika in just to make it look a little pretty on the top. Uh, but I won't use much. Because I want the kids to like it. Okay? Now, that's starting to brown. So, if you're cooking for adults only, you can spice it up. You can do all kinds of stuff to it. But, if you're not cooking for adults, don't, don't mess it up so that the kids won't eat it. Okay? That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, that's brown enough. So, we're going to start putting in our milk, and I'm going to measure it for y'all. I'm going to use a ball jar because it has measurements on it, too. So we're going to use, um, we'll probably put in two cups. That's the first cup. I'm going to turn it back on. And let's whisk it in, and then we'll add another cup.
This is our Thanksgiving dinner. Lisa Chappell. We didn't eat it yesterday. Yeah, we did not celebrate Thanksgiving yesterday. Today's our Thanksgiving. All right, as soon as that starts to thicken, we're going to add cheese to it. Matter of fact, we don't even have to wait on it to thicken because it's going to thicken in the oven and the cheese is going to help it thicken as well. But honey, it would thicken up. Oh, trust me. All right, let's pour in some cheese. This is a two cup cheddar jack. Now you can use mild cheddar, whatever you want to use. We got cheddar jack because we went to the grocery store last night and they were wiped out of mild cheddar. I guess everybody was making mac and cheese yesterday. So um, we're gonna pour this in. And I'm gonna just see the consistency before I decide to add more cheese. I'm gonna taste it first. Cause this is pretty much the cheese sauce. That cheese is melting. John Walter, we waited to celebrate because we had a bunch of work we needed to do yesterday for a church that we're drawing and actually some stuff on Collar Valley Cooks we had to do. We had several things to do and I didn't want to cook when I was stressed out and had still stuff left on my time plate and I knew I would be in a lot better mood if, I, if we got our job done. All right, let me taste this and see if it's cheesy enough. I think it is. That's pretty cheesy, but I'm going to add some more. I've got some um, cheese right here that's cheddar, and I'm just going to write a little bit in there right quick. Let me grab this. Where's my little thing that breaks the cheese? I don't know. Lord, I can never find nothing when y'all wash dishes. Do you know what I'm talking about? The thing that spins? You look in this drawer. And that question was from Wayne, Illinois. Well, for heaven's sakes. I guess I'll use a grater. Laura, we cannot make any comments about the yeah. co cooking show. Yeah, y'all don't oh. talk about that because we'll have to delete your... If, you, if we delete your comment, that's why. So... That's something y'all just gonna have to wait on. Well, we just can't say anything about it. Y'all will see it eventually, I promise. We will not let you miss anything. Okay, let's grate some cheese in here. I'm using the tiny grate. I guess I could use the big one. I'm gonna use the tiny one because it's easier to melt and it's faster when you mix it up. This is mild cheddar going in. And we'll save a little bit for the top of it too. Okay. We'll save this much for the top. All right, let's mix it up. And I'm going to get out the macaroni. Well, let's get this mixed in there a bit first, I guess. I'm going to add just a little bit of milk to it. It's too thick. Now that's more like mac and cheese. All right, let's pour mac in it. drops up in the floor if my dogs were in here they could eat. It's 
just a little too sticky for my taste. So I'm adding a little milk to it. You want it to be creamy, not just dry, okay? So you just want it to be nice and creamy. So get enough milk in there that it's creamy and not dry. That looks perfect to me. What do you think, Chris? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go over here and put it in the pan, and then we're going to shred cheese on top of it. Here we go. Do you want to spray it? Or are you going to would it matter? Um it shouldn't matter, but we can spray it. These things work really good and they usually don't stuff usually don't stick in it. I might have too much, actually. Our streetman asked if we ever used the large macaroni noodles. We just use the small. We just use the little ones. Buy them when they're on sale. And like I said, I don't make this often. This is not something I make a lot. This is something I make very rarely. Okay. So we're going to grate a little bit of this real fine cheese on the top. These are temptation dishes. I'm going to put a little cracked pepper on the top, too. I love cracked pepper. Okay. Yeah, these are temptations. You get them on QVC. I got them years ago, and I didn't know it, but my sister says they have a lifetime warranty. So if you break one or whatever, they'll replace it. Well, we broke plenty of them. We have lately, but we've had them forever. We really have. Mm -hmm. I've actually kept this set of dishes longer than any set of dishes I've ever had. Dishes were always my weakness at Christmas. I, want, I always wanted a set of dishes, and I always wanted a new bedspread. That was just what I wanted. Somebody gets a hunk of cheese. Mm -hmm. Spread it out. All right, y'all want you want me to put a little bit of pepper in it or not? Put some paprika. Or Just paprika. Cayenne pepper or something. Um, paprika. I'll put this, but I'm barely gonna put it. Is that that smoked paprika? Or no, this one? is cayenne pepper. Oh, you want me to get smoked paprika? Yeah, let's try it. Pretty good. This is Spanish smoked paprika. And it smells smoky. Okay. If y'all want to see the thing, I'll let you see it. All right, this is going in the oven. We're on the ball. We're about to fill this pie up. And what else we got to do? Double eggs? There, hang on, there's something hanging off. The bottom of that some cheese or something. There you go. You got it. Mac and cheese in the oven. Okay. All right. So next. You can finish your pie. We're going to finish the pie. I'm going to straighten up the kitchen. Just a minute. So we won't go off. And then we're going to go off and come back on. We'll finish our pie and start the green bean casserole.